Alright guys, this video is brought to you by Pocket Pinch Orthopedic Surgery and today we'll be talking about humeral shaft fractures. Non-operative indications for humeral shaft fractures include angulation less than 20 degrees in the AP plane, less than 30 degrees of varus valgus angulation, and less than 3 centimeters of shortening. The humerus can accommodate a reasonable amount of shortening without functional deficit. In the emergency department, we typically immobilize humeral shaft fractures in a coaptation splint. There's a tendency for this fracture to fall into varus. So in the emergency department, the coaptation splint should be applied with a valgus mold on the distal aspect of the humerus to align the fracture fragments as best as possible. At approximately 10 to 14 days after application of the coaptation splint, the patient can be transitioned to a sarmiento or a functional brace. If you choose surgical intervention, typically this is done with either open reduction internal fixation with plate and screws or intramedullary nail fixation. Important considerations regarding treatment, whether it be non-operative or operative, include the status of the radial nerve. Radial nerve palsy is common with this type of injury. It's important to note that approximately 92% of radial nerve palsies will resolve with observation in the first three to four months. Questions you may get asked about this is which muscle is the first to return, and this is typically the brachioradialis. You may also be asked which muscle is the last to return with recovery of a radial nerve palsy, and the answer is the EIP. It's important to note that with open fractures, there's a higher incidence of transection of the radial nerve and many advocate for open reduction internal fixation with nerve exploration. Other important considerations with surgical intervention include the course of the radial nerve. It's important to note that the radial nerve traverses from proximal medial to distal lateral, and you must protect this nerve with a posterior approach. Lastly, if you do choose intramedullary nail fixation, it's important to understand the nerves that are at risk with the distal interlocking screws. With the lateral to medial screw, the radial nerve, which is shown here in green, is at risk. With the anterior to posterior screw, the musculocutaneous nerve is at risk. And you can see that here. We hope you learned something. This video is brought to you by Pocket Pinto Orthopedic Surgery. Available online at Amazon and PocketPint.com.